College game day is heading to Salt Lake City, and it wouldn't be possible without the monumental win Utah just had over USC. We're talking about the big picture takeaways from that victory and breaking down the tape on both sides of the ball on today's Locked On Utes. You are Locked On Utes, your daily podcast on the Utah Utes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and thank you for making Locked On Utes your first listen every single day. We are available on all platforms, including YouTube and wherever you may get your podcast. Today's episode of Locked On Utes is brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks. You can go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use the code locked on college for a free deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy with Prize Picks. My name is JT Wistersill. Appreciate all of you for joining us today if this is your first time make sure you guys like and subscribe we'd love to interact with you in the comments below and or on social media you can follow our show at lockdown news personal handle is jt wistersill and yeah just what an impressive win for utah that's what we're going to be talking about the big picture takeaways then i'll be breaking down the tape in the second and third segment saying why it all happened that way but um it was just another reminder of that when you're talking about utah football they are one of the 10 to 15 best programs in college football right now. They are not a national title contender. They have not been, but they are in the next best grouping. When you look at their success, back-to-back conference champions and just no sign of going anywhere. I mean, no Cam Rising, no Brant Keithy, Lander Barton even going to be injured going forward, but just like all the injuries, Thomas Yasmin out, um, Kai Bernard, So many injuries, Logan Fano, so many injuries for this team. And no matter who seems to go down, they are always able to, Utah is always able to have that next man up mentality and go on and win games. It's so impressive to watch this team just continue. There are so many reasons Utah should have lost to USC. If I told any of you that Utah was going to beat USC without Cam Rising, you all would have been completely shocked and probably said that's and no one would have said that was likely because it wasn't you're just not supposed to win that game unless you have a difference maker at quarterback but as we talked about last week when you do have clear advantages at other positions on the field you're gonna have an opportunity to win the game and that's exactly what utah was able to do it was not always pretty for utah but they found a way to win and what a monumental win it was i mean just speaking about the program ascension that Utah has been on these last few years and um, it's awesome that they are such a hot program right now too, because they are going to be hosting college game day. I'm going to talk about that in a second, but just in general, being four and oh against a team like USC, who, when you, when you think about the history of college football, USC might be one of the five best programs in college football all time, obviously down the last decade. And especially obviously has huge problems when it comes to Utah, but uh, it just, once again, just shows you the, rise of this utah football program i'm i know many of you have been utah football supporters for a long time like this was something if you look back at those uh you know matt liner reggie bush days i know this isn't that kind of a usc team but like just thinking like yeah utah is going to beat usc four times like that wasn't always something that that was an outlandish statement a long time ago that's not in fact recently utah has owned usc that's not opinion that is a fact four no against them so just so impressed once again with this team the depth and this is how you know, like you're an elite team, an elite, and not even elite team, an elite program. When you could just continue to have guys step up and make plays, and also just the recognition. We'll talk about it more in the second segment. But like to have so many designed opportunities for Sioni Vaki to get the ball, recognizing what a special talent he is offensively, and obviously still wanting to allow him to play defensively is just a a great decision by Utah. But um, Kyle Whittingham, just the toughness the ability to just transform this program and help take it to new heights has been so impressive to watch. And I just, I think when we look back on this game, it'll be the defining moment of the season. I truly believe that I would love it to be another PAC 12 championship, but it's just, as we talked about, it's just going to get to a point where no camera eyes of these guys, it might catch up to Utah. I have a bat. It could be this week. We'll obviously be talking about that all week long on locked on Utes. Definitely Utah is so good at home. They will definitely have a chance to beat Oregon. They matched up with USC better than Oregon, but as I said, that's a discussion for, uh, for this week's show, but just so impressed with the heart of the Utah football program and, 
Every week, this team shows up and shows out no matter who goes down. It's so impressive to watch. How can you not love rooting for them, finding a way? Um, the ultimate, just a guy who represents that for this Utah football team is Bryson Barnes right now, who just continues to go out there and make plays uh, for this Utah team, despite you know being the backup, being disregarded as the backup even and just he's never the most talented thrower he made he had the interception was a rough spot but man just when you talk about making plays with your legs had a couple of nice throws throughout the night too especially a couple of those ones to Sione Vaki just letting a playmaker uh get under the ball and make a play so so impressive and with the impressive win as we discussed that comes the arrival of college game day to Salt Lake City as Utah sets to take on Oregon by far the best college football matchup from a rankings standpoint this week and to me, this is it's just it's an awesome that Utah is going to get to host college game day. It's something they haven't done since 2016, I saw. And you only get to host college game day outside of the appearances they make at you know FCS schools. There are just other places they've gone, like just to say they've never been before, but you only land a show like college game day by being an elite program and winning games and placing yourself in the top 15, which Utah has continued to do. And I think college game day is a, just a great tool. I mean, in terms of the hype that surrounds it. It's a three hour long show, lots of fun viral memories and clips and everything. You know, Pat McAfee does the kicking thing now, obviously Lee Corso with the headgear pick. So uh, just the scenic and just the memories of, you know, how packed president circle is going to be for the game. It's uh, it's just a special thing. And I really think it's something like people watch that game and you just, you want to be a part that kind of tradition. Like it's awesome to hear about the guys from game day, like talk about like, man, this is an incredible atmosphere and, and everything and i am it's just so cool to have like the staple pregame show of college football going to be at utah once again they've had it before but it just it, it feels so earned based on this current success that utah's been riding they weren't able to host it the previous two years even though they were would go on to win pac-12 championships this season so long overdue that game day return to salt lake city and i'm super excited that it is because like i said i think it just allows you to spotlight the university what a fun atmosphere the energy can be just Getting game day is a huge deal, and it is going to be really fun to watch it all play out in Salt Lake. And once again, just so incredibly just impressive that Utah was able to beat USC with all those injuries. And now they find themselves in a position where they're a top 15 team still. They're one of the best teams in college football right now, just continuing to find ways to win and play a top 10 team in the Oregon Ducks who they will have a chance to upset and it's going to be a it should be a really fun game as i said we will break that one down all week long on locked on utes but uh had to spend at least one more day talking about this uh this usc victory because it just means so much to the future of this program as they just continue to cement their legacy as one of the college football programs currently right now and uh just gives you that optimism like when you yeah at first it was like okay if once cam and some of these guys leaves maybe utah stumbles a little bit no with the level they're recruiting at and especially the level they continue to develop talent at that's the biggest thing with all the depth that all these different positions, Utah is going to remain a force in once they enter the Big 12. And when the college football playoff expands, I, I think this is a team that could have a chance to make a Cinderella type March Madness run, albeit not March Madness because you got a lot less teams. But I, I'm excited to see what the next the future looks like for Utah. But how can you not be fired up about the present? And I want to continue to talk about the present as it not just relates to the future of the Oregon game coming up, but looking back on the tape from the USC game. So what we can learn from both sides of the ball, especially because the Utah offense finally got cooking a little bit, which is a very much a sight for sore eyes. We're going to be discussing that in one moment, but first want to talk to you guys about one of the sponsors of today's show in athletic brewing co. Now time for your game changer of the week brought to you by athletic brewing company, much like Sione Vaki making plays on defense as always. And of course, offensively, the big pass plays he made over 140 yards through the air, added more yards on the ground again, just continues to be a game changer for this Utah football team. Just like Athletic Brewing has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste really good. Athletic Brewing Company has over 50 style craft non-alcoholic beers, including IPAs, Golden Sours, and more. They're constantly releasing limited edition experimental styles to add to their variety. They're truly fit for all time, so you can drink them anytime, anywhere, and make any activity even more enjoyable, like watching the big game, your kid's game, tackling work, or even working out. There's no hangovers ever, and you can find Athletic in-store, online, and at bars across the country. You can find Athletic 
Brewing Co.'s non-alcoholic brews at a store near you or buy online at athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers can use code Locked On to get 15% off your first order. That's code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N at checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer, exclusives, and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company, fit for all times. Also, I want to talk to you guys about another one of the sponsors of today's episode of Locked On Utes in our friends at UCCU. Learn and earn the UCCU mobile banking app that pays your entire family to learn about money. Kids look to parents to become more financially literate. Parents, they don't always know the answers. Learn and earn breaks down financial topics into fun, bite-sized educational games like quizzes and trivia. Every time a family member completes a topic, they earn points that can occur and can be redeemed for gift cards to stores like Amazon, Apple, Sephora, Walmart, Nike, and more. There's age-appropriate content for every member of the family who can compete against each other track their progress on leaderboards learn and earn is inside the ucc mobile banking app so you can play it anytime anywhere the more you play the more you learn and the more you learn the more you earn learn and earn part of uccu's award-winning be money smart youth banking program helping kids teens and parents have fun while becoming more financially literate together uccu love where you bank all righty tape breakdown time talking about what i saw for utah against usc watch the game yesterday and then today or watch the game yesterday as in on Saturday, because I'm recording this on a Sunday, and then went back and watched the tape of it today. I want to start with the the Utah offense. Um, so impressed by what they were able to do when you're just looking at the numbers from the game. You know, Bryson over 235 yards, three touchdowns. Yes, he had the pick six, and that was a very bad look for uh, for Utah at the time, but um, shook it off. 247 yards on the ground, and I mean, 482 yards for Utah, outgaining USC by over 80 yards so so impressive and i mean even the passing yards were only 21 yards different from usc like bryson barnes only had a 21 difference from caleb williams like that's it, it's crazy and i think just biggest thing that i was so excited about to see from a utah fan standpoint watching the film back was the creativity whether it was jet sweeps being coming back a little bit um and especially just the variations in the running game uh, I felt like with Nate Johnson, especially against like Oregon State, so much of what Utah was doing was just inside zone and just so much zone blocking. And it was just kind of easy, I felt like, for the Beavers to know like, okay, Utah wants, wants to run the ball and they know they're just going to run zone, a zone scheme. And here you see stretch runs. You saw counter plays. And of course, there was still the inside zones. And the offensive line is just genuinely executing better with Coley in at center too. I thought Tongai played a good game at left tackle. Keaton Bills, I thought he was better than anyone on Utah's offensive line this game. Might have been one or two. Like there was a couple of like pressure, like just misses the Utah offensive line has that it's hard to tell. Like, okay, was that Keaton's fault or was that Coley's fault? Uh, Coley was still pretty solid up and down. Uh, Mocha Fisi, not his best game, but he still he was a huge part of the team's success running the ball. Just had you know a couple false starts, um, got beaten pass pro a few times, uh, and kind of same thing with Satawa. Satawa got beat a couple times too, but. Overall, when you have that much yards on offense, the offensive line still played pretty well, all things considered. Run blocking was really strong, and the pass blocking was was decent. But Bryson did throw that interception because he got absolutely smoked um, right before. You can't throw that pick, but I'm also saying he wasn't given the time to try and make a better throw. And I think the offensive line would say that too. But um, I, Utah would bring an extra offensive lineman, just going back to talk about the creativity. Uh, so much motion and stuff going on pre-snap, whether it's the tight end shifting, it's a – we already talked about the motion guys coming across. I just felt like that was much more prevalent this game. And just speaking of just different looks and things, you had three guys for Utah that all took multiple snaps in this game, whether it's Bryson Barnes, Jaquin and Jackson or Sione Baki. And how effective was that read option too? with when you get Jaquindon and Sione Vaki in there, like just kind of pick your poison type of thing. Do you want Jaquindon who's capable of making you miss and just running over you or Sione who will just absolutely zoom past you? Um, just a devastating thing for defenses to have to choose from. And so impressed there with the, once again, just the creativity by Utah offensively and uh, fun to see, because when you have players like Sione and Jaquindon, you want to get the ball in their hands. And the nice thing too, especially when like Sione or Jaquindon would carry it and they ran the, the option with the guy by their with the other guy by their side that back became the lead, a lead blocker for them and Jaquindon made a couple of nice blocks on uh, some of the Sioni runs too so both running backs were awesome just Sioni Vaki just continues to blow me away I mean he is so impressive when you're talking about the nine rushes for 68 yards this week fought he had 149 yards two touchdowns through the air uh, just the speed he shows off just the natural running ability First touchdown was impressive just because he ran right past the linebacker. The second one to make that cut in that situation is one 
just most other collegiate running backs aren't making. So it was just, he is so impressive and elite and his instincts and just natural ability to shine at a position that he hasn't played, been trained to play really like heavily. We don't know how long this package has been in place and all those kind of things, but Sione is mainly trained to be a defensive back. So for him to be this naturally good at running back is incredible. And I guess this is just the thing for Utah. Now Jaquinnon did it last year. Sione did it this year. Well, uh, we'll see who does it next makes the switch to running back and, uh, and looks exceptional for Utah. And uh, shout out to Quinton again, too. I know Sione had the bigger, flashier plays, but man, Jaquinnon just running so hard. His vision really helped this team spring a couple of the bigger runs, too. Uh, focusing on Bryson a little bit more. I thought Bryson played pretty well. Uh, did a good job getting the ball out quick. Felt pressure most of the time well. Did take one uh, one bad sack at one point. Had the had the interception, as we discussed, too. And um, but that run late, just a recognition there. Like, and the, multiple times throughout the game, I think uh, Brock Hubert, I, Hubert, excuse me, I, I apologize if I butcher his name, the analyst for uh, Fox Sports who was calling the game with uh, Benetti made a great point just how Bryson, whenever there was an opportunity to run, would take advantage of it. Like, just reading, okay, is this going to open up here? Uh, would defenders or their heads turn the wrong way? So much impressive quarterback play from Bryson Barnes in this game in that regard and a number of accurate throws too that helped this team whether it was the touchdown to Landon King on the move was massive we mentioned the, some of the throws to Vaki uh, hooked up with Vele a few times too so uh, so impressed there and uh, Andy Ludwig Sione Vaki would probably still be the offensive MVP right two touchdowns how can not for what he did through the air um, and Bryson deserves a lot of credit but I thought this was the best game Andy Ludwig has called on the season. He continues to have Alex Grinch's number, and that did not change Saturday night. I don't want to be too much of a Debbie Downer, but I do think Bryson's run totally saved this Utah team from getting eviscerated for clock management because Utah had, it was first and 15 off a penalty uh, with like 115 left, I want to say, something along the lines of that in, in the fourth quarter, final drive for Utah. Bryson runs it, he gets tackled. Or it was actually maybe it was 107 it was snapped at. But either way, when Bryson is tackled two yards short of the first down, it is there is 102 remaining in the game. 35 seconds goes off the clock, and by the time the next income the run comes for Utah again, I believe it was um, it was once the only 27 seconds left in the or there was only 35 excuse me there was only 35 seconds left. So you let 27 seconds go off the clock when you wanted to be in more comfortable field goal range knowing that you know you have a slow methodical passing attack you're not going to make those gains up in chunks so i thought that was really poor clock management on utah's part there i just think and i think utah ended the game saving two timeouts anyways so i understand the logic of maybe wanting to save them but just when you have a situation like that when it takes you that long to get to the line i think you just wasted way too much time in that situation so i hope that's something that utah goes back and can reflect on like we won but we could have played that situationally better but yeah, really optimistic about this Utah offense uh, as their ability to continue to grind out wins. If the defense continues to play above and beyond the Utah offense, even when they play defenses better than USC, which they have multiple of those coming up on their schedule, should continue to mount some successful drives that allow this Utah team to win games potentially against top 10 teams. But as I mentioned, there's a lot of pressure on the Utah defense to perform as there is every week. And the Utah defense certainly stepped up and lived up to the hype once again against the USC Trojans as they've done the last couple of years. Now we are going to be talking about what I saw from the defense on film in one moment, but want to tell you guys a little bit more about our friends at prize picks. Prize picks is the most fun I've had winning up to 25 times my money. This football season, you can just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats and place your entry. There's quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and enormous selection of players and stat types are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Looking ahead to next week's NFL action, do you think OBJ is going to have more than 50 yards? He's obviously been a little bit of a, not a non-fact, that's a strong word, but a lesser featured role than we might have thought he would be. Or do you think Josh Allen's in for a bounce back game after they suffered the loss to the Patriots? Say he's going to toss more than two touchdowns. That's where prize picks comes in and they have you covered with a great offer because you can go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use the code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100 repeat offer because you guys can go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. All righty, coming back into this one. Talking about the Utah defense, just so impressive always. The Utah defense week in and week out. Yelled Caleb Williams to 
256 passing yards. Um, you could tell he was frustrated throughout the day. You get gashed in the running game early. I think USC had over 100 yards in the first half, if I remember correctly, but you only end up giving 145 on the game when you were well on pace to give up technically 400 yards on the ground. But just continue to be so impressed with each level of this Utah defense. Um, it's really just disappointing. Sucks for Lander Barton that he has lost for the season. Just, you know, he's a guy who works so hard. It's just all about ball week in and week out. So hate that he won't be out there for the for the rest of the season for Utah because you know how much he puts into it and wants to be out there. But just talk about the defense performance. Why was Utah able to have success against Caleb and the Trojans? You know, early on, get gashed in the running game. But I genuinely thought, for as much as people were on USC for not running the ball, maybe they could have a little bit more. They're really enamored with those receiver screens, and that cost them a few times. But even when they did try to run it, Utah was ready for it. The, whether, the entire front seven, like Tafuna, Tanuvasa, just the whole D-line stepped up and started to make more plays than they had made earlier in the running game and especially one of the key moments of the game that no one has really remembered and they've forgotten about and look a lot of things happened after this but i truly believe third and two usc want just is going to run it with caleb williams jonah ellis lining up over the right tackle is able to originally thought it was a just going to be a pass play i think so he rushes upfield recognizes it spins back inside and takes down caleb williams to force the USC punt at that point, Utah just come out of their first three and out of the game and USC had looked like they were going to be able to march it down again and score. It would have made it a 21 14 game. And maybe the USC mojo just keeps going from there. It might've been hard for Utah to get back into this game, but Ellis stepped up and made the play as he continues to do. We got home for another sack applied countless pressure. Van Fillinger made plays. Uh, they said on the broadcast even how well the Utah defensive line has done at keeping Caleb in the pocket. That's where he's at his most devastating when he's running around, buying time, making those off-platform throws. And he had one of them late in the game that was really impressive too. But Utah did a great job keeping him in the pocket. Uh, Connor O'Toole, the resentless pr pursuit. You got guys like Junior Tafuna, David Fotu, both knocking down passes at the line of scrimmage. The, the defensive line, after getting gashed on the ground a little bit for Utah, really stepped up. And as I said, just kind of made Caleb Williams uncomfortable in the pocket, did not allow him to get outside of it. The secondary for Utah is, was tremendous in this game, too, I would still. And I know, or I should say, tremendous in key moments. I Yes, they got beat on some big pass plays, but, I mean, it's USC. It's Caleb Williams. It's Lincoln, right? Like, you're going to get beat sometimes. The amount of coverage sacks that Utah forced in this game, impressive. The amount of moments where it was like, USC needs a touchdown here. They need to keep the drive alive. They need to get a first down. and. No one was open or Caleb Williams, who I've been very high on Caleb Williams, just as some, someone who just enjoys watching football. When I watch Caleb play, I think he's very impressive. He definitely does have a problem, though, it seems like, where he doesn't like to take always the easy completions. I'm not the first one to say this, but I did notice it a lot tonight or just watching the game back where I'm like, man, he actually could have gone there, but he just he looks for the big plays because he's so used to being able to buy time. And against one of the best defenses in college football, like Utah possesses, you, you can't afford to play that way. And Utah capitalized on it. But so Maya Vaughn barely heard his name call. He was elite. Uh, also, Brendan Rice was had his quietest game in a while. That's got to give a lot of credit for Utah there because Rice has been really good this season too. And Rice even just in the game only had 34 yards in this one. So it, Singer was quiet again. He's been kind of quiet all season. But the secondary, Miles Battle made a couple of nice plays too. Uh, Tao Johnson did a really few really good things. Cole Bishop, great to see him back in the second half. And how about going back to Van Fillinger? How about that force fumble he had on the running back? Uh, so key and cru so crucial in the efforts there. But yeah, credit to this Utah team for just really stepping up as the game goes on defensively. I felt like they really did were able to settle in and just made so many more stops because of it. Up front, the secondary shined all game long. Linebackers, Karene Reed, Lander Barton, Demuni when he played two were. We're strong in tackling. Uh, this isn't really on the defense, but a lot of people say like defense slash special teams. Yeah, that late punt return, that can't happen. I mean, that was that was brutal. When you take away turnovers, USC only scored, or like a big return like that, like just when the Utah defense themselves were out on the field, yes, they gave up the late run to Caleb Williams, but that was, well, and I don't know why Utah was had the middle of the field so open in that one, but that was the defense already. The special teams unit already put you in a horrible position. They only gave up a field goal when it was like the U, the U, Trojans offense versus Utah's defense second half. They only scored a field goal. That's how good Utah was at stopping the run and making Caleb Williams uncomfortable, which was something we talked about we thought was possible because of the advantages Utah had along the defensive line battling with the Trojans offensive line. So 
just a great win for Utah. I think the final thing I'll say is uh, watching the game back, it was just so much fun to focus in on Utah, just taking every advantage they can, trying to grind out time of possession, knowing they were trying to steal a win in the Coliseum, to slowly but surely run these defensive tackles. I used to play high school football. I know what a lineman jog looks like. That was very much a lineman jog, um, kind of slow and deliberate when you're trying to buy time. The amount of times that Utah defensive line would get set up and like not even look to see if someone's coming to get them just so they could buy the extra time where the ref had to allow them to sub was a masterclass of a decision by Utah. I thought it was just, just playing chess instead of checkers. I mean, just all the, the time it would run off, how frustrated it was getting USC. So many of the times I just enjoyed rewinding the play and watching Lincoln Riley throw his hands up or get angry at the officials, but rules are rules. And that was kind of like Kyle Whittingham's Bill Belichick moment, like exploiting that with these uh, pretending to be aloof defensive tackles slowly, but surely jogging on and off the field. And you can only do that when you are deep at those positions as Utah is. So that was, uh, that was really funny too. But you know, part of me is really bummed that this is the last time that Utah is going to play USC for the foreseeable future, because these games are always so fun. They really do deliver, but Utah has been the better team and they've been the better program the past few seasons. I know there's a lot of USC fans that do not like me saying that, but the numbers do not lie, especially that four and record that Utah has in the last four meetings against the USC Trojans. So, Oh, shout out Morgan Scally. Didn't say his name yet. Uh, great game plan realizing like he didn't, he was like, I don't need to blitz to get pressure this year. I got Connor van Jonah, even interior that's capable of pushing the pocket. Like I have guys who can keep Caleb contained and get to him. And I thought it was a great decision for Utah not to bliss. It allowed them to play more guys in coverage, and it really frustrated Caleb Williams all game long. So a great showing for Utah, and now it's on to Oregon. That's what we'll be breaking down on this week's Locked on Utes. Every episode dropping, we'll be looking ahead to the Oregon game, and we'll also be continuing to talk about Cam Rising being ruled out for the season as, as well as Brant Keithy and what the implications of that can mean. It's a loaded week of Locked On Utes as the college football season rolls on, and we can't wait to talk more Utah football with you tomorrow. We'll see you then.